God of War came out in 2005 and spawned an entire generation of imitators. Many will say that God of War itself is a ripoff of Devil May Cry, so God of War imitators are technically Devil May Cry imitators, but I wouldn't go that far. I think there's enough stylistic difference between Devil May Cry and God of War that what quantifies a God of War inspired game and what quantifies a Devil May Cry inspired game are completely separate things. I mean, Dante's Inferno and Bayonetta may have slightly similar gameplay, but stylistically they're definitely the offspring of their forefathers, and attempt to be very different things in a great many ways, including gameplay. There's no doubt in my mind that God of War was inspired by Devil May Cry, but much in the same way that Crash Bandicoot was inspired by Donkey Kong Country. They're similar, but each have distinct identities. But regardless of that, I just uncovered something recently that might blow your minds, and it's something that raises a very interesting question that might change everything. Was God of War really inspired by Devil May Cry, or is there something more nefarious that's been hiding under our noses for years? Could God of War itself be a blatant ripoff? Because I might have found a skeleton in God of War's closet. You know, to add to the pile. Does anybody remember Rygar? Yeah, I figured you wouldn't. I knew Rygar as an underrated action-adventure game on the NES. I first became aware of it when it was referenced in an episode of The Angry Video Game Nerd, specifically the Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde revisited episode, which I think I watched for the first time in late 2011. Wait a minute. That music. Okay, you ever play Rygar? You know, that action-adventure game? I paid Rygar no mind because despite being a bit of an NES geek at the time, it wasn't really a game that I was invested in. But then about a year later, by sheer coincidence, I came into possession of a PS2 game that surprised me by its very existence called Rygar, The Legendary Adventure. Although the spine just says Rygar. It was an attempt by Temco in the early 2000s to revive Rygar, which was a very odd and obscure choice for something to revive, but never mind. TLA is more or less a remake or 3D adaptation of said NES game. I remember playing it for a couple hours, not being particularly impressed, and then forgetting about it for several years. Only recently has it re-entered my memory as I've been looking into God of War ripoffs, but we'll get to that when we get to that. Let's back up a bit. The game is set in a fictional island called Argus and stars the titular warrior, Rygar. I think the game has a bit of an NES style of storytelling in the sense that it wants to get right into the action. It starts off with our protagonist having a ceremony in his honor. Did he perform a great deed? Did he win a great battle? No, the ceremony is held for no reason in particular other than the fact that he's just really good, you guys. I praise you as a man of merit. Your brave composure brings me peace of mind. What, you thought I was joking? But anyways, within literally one minute, these beings calling themselves Titans show up and start wrecking house. The princess here is captured, Rygar gets tossed into a conspicuous hole in the ground, and now with the help of Disc Armor, a legendary weapon of the gods, you have to stop the Titans, bring peace to Argus once again, and save the princess Harmonia. Yeah, that's actually her name. Couldn't be more on the nose if they tried. Strangely reminds me of King Erotic from The Legend of Awesomest Maximus. Anybody ever seen that movie? I'm supposed to be at an orgy in half an hour. I've pushed it back four times already. So I'm going to be a very generous god king here, okay? So Rygar's plot is refreshingly straight to the point and lets the game speak for itself, which is good because the quality of voice acting and writing is somewhat woeful for what little there is and only gets worse as it goes on, while the gameplay is... well, that's complicated. When you get into the gameplay, you'll find a more or less competent hack and slash spectacle fighter. The visual aesthetic is reminiscent of a few things. To me, it looks like a combination of Final Fantasy XII and Ico, or Ico, or however that's pronounced, as well as a splash of Dark Cloud in there somewhere. It also strikes me as maybe a game that was meant for the PS1 originally. I can't put my finger on why, it just has that late PS1 style, you know what I mean? Generally speaking, this game's a linear series of Zelda-style dungeons where you have to get through combat and platforming challenges, and you also get a hint of puzzle solving, which usually amounts to picking up a statue. You have the standard Hades disc armor at first, which is long range but only attacks in a straight line, but later you get a slow one called the Heavenly disc armor that attacks in a sweeping motion, and one called the Sea disc armor that's short range and quick as hell. Things didn't start off great. The combat could really use a way to avoid getting hit other than a block, because there are quite a few enemies that can break your guard, making it functionally useless in some cases, and also breaking your combo to block an incoming attack can be slightly finicky and unreliable. A dodge roll would be nice to get out of range of larger enemies, because otherwise you're just at their mercy at times. 
There's also a bit of an issue with the combos themselves in that you can't redirect your combo midway in most cases. So if you start out hitting slightly to the left of your enemy or something, not uncommon because of the fixed camera, you have to end the combo to readjust in most cases. Also, very few enemies get stunned while you're attacking them, so they'll usually interrupt, so it's almost useless to do the longer, more complex combos. Plus, the enemy variety is a bit woeful at first. For the first hour, you're mostly just fighting caterpillars. So the game was obnoxious at first, until I started unlocking some new attacks and learning to utilize the slide a bit more, and at that point, the combat started to click a bit more and the game became much more fun. But even then, the ride wasn't entirely smooth, like the Cetus boss fight, which I kept reading as Cletus. Anyway, half the time I was fighting this thing, it was just either out of range or stunlocking me. I was stuck on this guy for ages. Look at this! Yeah, cause that's balanced and fair design. More than any boss, you need to do as much damage to this guy as you possibly can in a short amount of time as you can before he starts going sicko mode. Either way, that was the worst of it, and once I was picking up what this game was putting down, I actually had a hard time putting it down, ironically. The gameplay gradually gets more complex as you unlock more combat abilities and traversal mechanics. These let you go through new areas and go back through old areas to open up the worlds, kind of like a Metroidvania. And it was always exciting to work forward to see what absolute nonsense the story was going to cook up next. I literally felt like this was a sequel where all the context was in the previous game for how indecipherable the plot was despite having so little of it. They just kept shoving names and events and whatnot in your face, and the villains turn out to not be villains or something, and there's all this talk of souls, possessions, true forms, and a bunch of mumbo jumbo I didn't follow. There's this weird musical number at one point. This whole new Lest with I checked out right around the time I was fighting a five-headed dragon, except each head was the head of a child and it may or may not have been the true form of a guy I had fought a couple times already named Icarus, who may or may not have been evil. Yeah, despite being pretty vanilla at first, this game goes off the rails after a point. Anyway, when you look at this game, you can see what the thought process was going in, because it's a pretty accurate representation of what the NES game might have looked like brought up to date with what was at the time modern technology. In fact, it's a more accurate translation than most. But regardless of any good or bad that Rygar the Legendary Adventure does, you can't look at this and tell me that it doesn't remind you of something. The fixed camera, the weapon at the end of the chain, a combo system based around light attacks and heavy attacks, the combo counter, the army general tasked with fighting deities, the Greek setting. Actually, the setting is a bit nebulous. They mention the Roman defeat of the Egyptian dynasty, which I think is referring to the War of Actium in 32 BC, the war that pitted Roman occupied Egypt against Rome proper. Meaning, this would hypothetically be set after the Greek Empire had already declined, but then all the names of the deities mentioned in this game are exclusively the names of Greek deities. Even Argus, the island this game is set on, is taken from Argus in Greek mythology, the beast with a hundred eyes. So I think this game is a bit of a grab bag of settings and imagery, something that's fairly common with Japanese media as I understand, but primarily takes from Greek mythology. Enough tangenting, my point is, just look at them side by side. They're not only similar, they're crazy similar. If you took out the gore in God of War, you'd practically be looking at the same game. Obviously, there are subtle differences. Different combos, different level progression, different, uh, different primary gameplay focus. Honestly, the fact that I had to strain myself to think of something says it all, doesn't it? Rygar even has an attack that does that thing where he slams his weapon into the ground which creates an AoE explosion attack. Like, Jesus Christ, could they have been more similar? Having been so jaded to the idea of games ripping off God of War even then, I just automatically assumed that that's what this was. A ripoff that was egregiously similar to the thing it was ripping off. Because what more can you really assume when you see a popular game that everyone, with a brain, loves and an unknown game that you picked up on a whim? It's obviously just a pretender looking to capitalize on a formula that's proven itself to be successful, just like all the others. I thought to myself several years ago and just accepted as the truth because I didn't care enough to look into it. But come to find out, this actually isn't a God of War ripoff. It's an original idea. Only recently I discovered that, while God of War came out in 2005, Rygar, the legendary adventure, was released in late 2002. 
As a matter of fact, Rygar was only released a year and change after the first Devil May Cry game, so it's very likely that development started sometime before the first Devil May Cry game was released, so chances are good that it's a completely original construction inspired by nothing more than the NES game through a modern lens, thought up independently from any game that may or may not have garnered a comparison positive or negative. That blows my mind on so many levels. Given how insanely similar that God of War is to this game, well, I'm just saying, get the DNA tests out, Kratos. I think we might have found your biological father. Just think, I was originally going to put this in a video about God of War ripoffs. <laughs> Wouldn't I have looked like a total lemon if that happened? It throws a lot of the design of God of War into a bit of a spotlight. Why is there a fixed camera? Is it to show off the epic environments, or is it because this game did it? Why did he have a weapon at the end of a chain? Is it because he needed grand sweeping attacks in order for combat to be viable in big environments? Or is it because this game did it? Why did they choose the setting they did? Was it because Greek mythology contains some of the most iconic fictional characters ever put to paper and several of the most epic stories ever told? Or is it because this game did it? Could we have stumbled across a conspiracy of a lifetime? Could the millions upon millions of dollars that Sony and Santa Monica have made be owed to an obscure PS2 game that nobody's ever heard of? Can we credit this game for God of War's success? No, of course not. Don't be ridiculous. God of War was probably going to be a success either way. As for the other questions, well, short of holding David Jaff at gunpoint and asking him, there's no real way to know for sure, but if I had to guess, I think the answer is no. I honestly believe that these games being virtually identical is almost certainly a giant coincidence. Why do I think this? Simply put, nobody's ever really even heard of Rygar the Legendary Adventure. I'd never heard of it before I acquired it, and apparently its original release only sold less than 500,000 copies. Compare that to the original Devil May Cry, which sold nearly 2.2 million copies. And even the underwhelming Devil May Cry 2, which sold an additional 1.7 million copies. DMC has also had a consistent profile in the gaming landscape, where Rygar is rarely talked about at all. Even at the time, I don't recall anybody talking about Rygar. When you examine it, it becomes clear that Rygar is too much of an obscure title to realistically inspire anything. It would be like somebody being inspired by the game Trigger Man. Yeah, anybody remember Trigger Man? Exactly. I just can't envision a scenario wherein one of the lead designers of God of War played or saw this incredibly obscure PS2 game and pulled a Marvin Berry from Back to the Future. It's more likely that Rygar was a case of two different studios, Temco and Capcom, coming up with roughly the same idea at the same time, sort of like Overwatch and Battleborn, or Spiderbot and Metroid, and then God of War was inspired by Devil May Cry, with Rygar not really playing a significant factor either way. It just so happens that the end result of that inspiration was very similar to a game that had been lost to the sands of time even then. I could be wrong, I'm not saying it's impossible, but this is what I believe. It just seems to me that the idea of this being any more than a coincidence is a bit of a stretch too far for me. It's interesting to think about this though. Where would the industry be if Rygar was the one that took off instead of God of War? Would we still have all the imitators? Would the bandwagon have kicked into full gear earlier? Would we now be looking at Rydad? What would have ended up being Sony's tentpole game franchise? Would Santa Monica Studio even still be around? Or would they go the way of SCE Studio Cambridge after Medieval? Makes you think. Or does it? Either way, Rygar the Legendary Adventure is certainly a neat footnote in history, and a pretty decent game in its own right. I'd say check it out if you can emulate it, or if you can hunt down a copy yourself. Anyway, that's enough exposing possible conspiracies for one day. Maybe next week I'll cover my other major conspiracy theory. Did Capcom do 9-11? That's all from me. Don't forget to like and subscribe and smash that bell icon so you'll always know what I'm up to, and leave a comment telling me what you think. I've been the King of Snark Style on Tactical Bacon Productions, and I will see you next time. Peace. Also, f**k Rygar. I prefer Rye Rule. It's five o'clock somewhere. Oh.